Good afternoon, good evening, good night, whatever, wherever you may be. Welcome to another episode of Books and Bullshit. We need to get like sound effects that do, 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 like that. No, you yeah. would abuse that so terribly. Well, I just want a soundboard. I think it'd be cool. No, you would never be allowed to touch it. But, uh, nope. Layla. Nope. <laughs> Not my mom. Don't look at her. <laughs> Don't look at her. Don't look at her. Don't look at me. Look at your she's damn not, She's talking. not going to help you. Layla does not want you having a soundboard either. Some bullshit. Well, Zachary Chopchinsky, the disappointed author. <laughs> and somewhat disappointing. <laughs> I'm here with Martina McAtee, a.k.a. Krampus. <laughs> That's my maiden name. Oh, man. Well, so... yeah. We're Welcome back. to our censored episode of Books and Special Bull edition Bleep. Of- That's where we need the soundboard. <laughs> of Books and Bull... Um, <laughs> this is a PG-13 This episode. is where your hiccups would have come in handy. I know. <laughs> uh, um, unless, um, as, as we're, as we're going to learn. Right unless, up, right up. unless, as we will learn, if it's something that really has to be said. <laughs> yes, then it's Okay. So um, we're keeping this episode PG-13 today in, in, in light of the baby deadling we will be interviewing here shortly. Yes. Um, by baby deadling. The deadlings are Martina's little fandom of monsters and ghouls. Little? And she is little. Uh, no, they're psychos. Um, so <laughs> I was like, I think you're setting people up for failure. <laughs> so, um, but we're going to be... Um, Actually interviewing Martina's babyest deadly, I believe. Yeah, she's my littlest one. Well, her little sister's in there too, but she never talks. She's a ghost. She just sort of is always watching. Uh, Esri Farnham? Yep. And Esri, I think she speaks for her little sister anyway. Well, there's two of there's two little sisters. She's got Aaliyah, who's like, I want to say if Esri's 16, Aaliyah's probably 13 or 14. And then she's got the baby baby, Freya, who's like... Four now, I think. Okay, not only do I hear that her parents are cool, but they give really cool names. Yes, they are very much into their Norwegian ancestry. She helped me with all of the the Norse stuff in the novella. Well, I guess it's not really a novella, but the prequel. <laughs> cool. It's not a novella if it's a brick of a book. <laughs> well, that's the sad right? part. Is that my my male male romances are like. 40,000 words less, and they're full-size novels, and they're still less than the prequel. <laughs> I just like to write big books. I cannot lie. It's true. So, but in light of that, we're going to be talking about thievery. Yes. Now, now is where we need more, another soundboard. We can do the dramatic, like, so bop, 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 like They, like, cue up where the they, keyboard. Where they hit the harpsichord. Oh, I think of thievery. I always think of like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like with somebody with their, on their tiptoes and with the money bag. <laughs> I feel like we might need to just for some of these types of episodes. After one episode, people are like, if you fucking don't take that soundboard away from somebody, we're not going to listen. Damn it. I already, damn it. <laughs> Stop causing PG-13. I can't. I can't. It must have really needed to <laughs> I feel like it did. Okay, so, hair in my mouth. So, we're gonna, <laughs> so I was reading a, a really re- interesting article, and it was talking about some uh, thievery. Um, so, <laughs> on September 5th, this article was written, and I kind of wanted to bring it up, because I think it's really good to kind of talk about these sorts of things every once in a while, and talk about them, you know... Oh, frankly, over and over because this will never go away. But before I get into that, I'm now reading um, the author of this article, and her name is Priscilla de Gregory. All right. Priscilla. All right. All right. I, I, why is that exciting to you? It's, it's an interesting name. Soundboard. Enjoy. Oh, no. Layla. Just don't blast it into my ears, please. I'm not getting sound from the soundboard. <laughs> That's because the sound was off. Is this your first time using a phone? Shh. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> you don't get to give yourself a clap track. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's This is not... Wow. 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 Get out of my car. <laughs> you don't get to... 
Oh my god. <laughs> See what you've done? You don't get to just zap. You don't get to just play with the soundboard. He's never giving speak. it back to you. <laughs> Damn. All right, fine. So anyway, back to the article that I was reading. Um, well, it is about um apparently um um the son of the detection fiction writer Frederick Denay claims 33 of his dad's signed books were stolen by his stepmom Rose, passed to her son Terry, and eventually given to Sotheby's for auctioning, according to Manhattan Supreme Court. Sotheby's. Boardwalk. Sotheby's? There's no R. Sotheby's. Sotheby's? Mm-hmm. Sotheby's. hmm So, the bees. Correct. Gotcha. Um, and I guess there's a class action lawsuit. Okay, the curtains is now playing with the German edition of the soundboard. Let's not do that one. What the fuck was can, that? Can we, that was an accident. Can we not have Hitler on the soundboard? That would be really great for our for our. Family. That's the name of the episode: Hitler on the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Hitler on the soundboard. Stalin on the drums. <laughs> Their band's called Axis Power Chords. <laughs> <laughs> Not like a good Nazi joke. I know, right? For those of you playing the home game, um, read a book if you didn't get that joke. <laughs> Any of them. It'll be in there. So, essentially, I thought it was really interesting because the son of this author didn't know that the books were stolen until he saw them on Sotheby's um, auction. Um, so what'd they get for him? They were trying to get five thousand um, dollars a piece per book. And how many collection. books were there? Thirty-three. Oh, God! Wow. wow. Okay. Gosh, I really want to cuss right now. <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> Do that quick math. <laughs> One hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. Not a bad haul. No. My books aren't worth that. I'm not worth that. My books aren't worth the paper they're written on. I don't have <laughs> organs that are worth that. We all have organs that are worth that on the black market. Not mine. No, I think I think you're wrong. I, I've actually like wished that on occasion that we lived in countries where that shit was legal. Because I'm like, if I need one kidney, and I can sell a kidney for like 20 grand. like. The problem is, is that you're really, really betting that your other kidney is it's just very one. strong. <laughs> You, and you really want a doctor that's, like, honest. Like, go look at my kidneys. Leave the good-looking one. Like, the one with fewer dents. I want to keep that one. I mean, that guy's got no kidneys. He's going to be happy to get what he gets. I know, right? This That one slightly, has slightly more mileage on it. What's interesting is that we don't remove the bad kidney. We just add the good one. Yeah. So the people who get kidney transplants have three. Three. Not two, three. <laughs> have three kidneys. <laughs> I'm three years old today. <laughs> but yeah, so sometimes we'll do CAT scans and Marilyn will be like, oh, oh, they have an extra kidney. <laughs> she gets really excited when she sees horseshoe kidneys. It's oh. a shape. It's a shape of, it's a weird, it's a weird kidney. <laughs> but yeah, oh. sometimes we see three and like the, the bad kidney will be wee sort of shriveled and tiny, but it still works. Sometimes it just gets a little bit of function. Sometimes they just start working again. Can I get my kidney back? Yeah, like, I'm going to need to take that one. Yeah. Give it back. This is a loan. You had that for a lease. Um, (laughs) Sorry. I mean. Your time is up. I I will waive the mileage limit on your lease because you clearly went over that. Sadly, most people's kidneys and livers don't last more than like 10 or 20 years and they do have to get a new one. The, the have, ones who have, have yeah, that have transplants. I was going to be like, I don't, I, I, I didn't well, know this. I just dropped some major knowledge on that. They were yeah. like, oh, wait <laughs> Layla a and I are like, uh. <laughs> We've been an adult for a really long time and we're doing the math here. That doesn't sound yeah. right. I'm concerned at this point. I'm almost 30. And most people who need a liver transplant eventually need a kidney transplant a because we, of the medicine. Are we remembering not to swear? I can't remember. I didn't say any <laughs> swear words except for the one time I said the swear word way okay, back I'm when. Because like, you and I are starting to like, talk how we talk. And I'm like, oh, crap. Are we saying things? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> I know. We're tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> it's scary. And my Jordans. Are you tiptoeing through the tulips in your Jordans? Tiptoeing in my Jordans. No. 
No. Riff what? It's a rap song by a guy named Riff Raff. Okay, why is Riff Raff tiptoeing in his Jordans? Because you take care of your Jordans. Then what the heck is the point of wearing shoes if you're just going to tiptoe in them? I like I do, you said heck. I, I, I try, I'm you doing my yourself. damnedest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying here. You can't see it at home, but we are like, like cherry red fighting the urge to use all of really, our favorite profanities. So we haven't once brought up the P word. I will say. <laughs> I will say, for those of you li- that are going to listen to the next episode after this, you better buckle up because <laughs> we're just pushing this to the back. If you're now. playing the drinking game at home, be prepared to go to the hospital. Yeah. You might want to start drinking light beer for the next episode. <laughs> Don't go to liquor. Never lick her without her permission. Um, damn. <laughs> Martina, you can't say that either. Sure I can. That you should never lick anybody without their permission. Argue my geography at this point. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, listen, you shouldn't lick anybody anywhere without their permission. I learned that lesson the hard way in high school. I licked somebody on the face. They did not like that. No, nobody likes that. My ex used to do it as a torture Wait. method. Wait, huh? Who'd you lick in the face in high school? She's like, that's none of your business. Well, we business. all know who you were licking in high school. Everybody but Layla. So Layla can lick whoever she wants to in high school. And you can but shut I, up and how take did it. it. Play out? I don't I honestly don't I was a really weird kid. I honestly don't But if say you didn't go well, like how did it play out? Did they try to fight you? Uh, <laughs> they tried to fight you. No, <laughs> did they draw a samurai sword and declare? It's one of those war? it's one of those situations where when I don't like people being very close to me and when people get close to me I react in very strange ways. And so you're like a dog. You <laughs> react in aggressive ways. She also urinated on their feet. <laughs> so what happened? They just freaked out and ran off. I don't blame them. Yeah. Seriously, Mick's dad used to hold me down and would lick my face and just thought it was so funny. Can I just say it's weird in like horror movies and certain action movies stuff where like the villain will lick like a like a victim. Like, yeah. That would be me if I was a villain. Let's just say it's weird in general to be an actor and have to be like, hey, I know we just totally had lunch together, but now I hate you. And also, you're going to be tied up and I'm going to lick your face and we're going to have to do this about 46 times. So when you leave here today, you're going to smell like my saliva. That's gross. Like that is, I mean, you have to pay me millions of dollars. Take it easy on perfumes, um, makeup. Could you actually just... Go buy some French fries and just rub them on your cheek for me. So Even that... better, the dude who's licking you, or woman, has to be licking stage makeup for hours. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> just in that one spot, there's just a big... They come a and big... It out afterwards. Did it look like that one, like, that one picture of Miley Cyrus on the red carpet? Because she was in a period where she kept, like, sticking her tongue out sideways, like, ah, and shit like that. And she had licked away the makeup all around her mouth. And so it was, like, three shades wider circle around her mouth because she kept doing that. All I can think of, though, is in Titanic, where Rose kept having to spit in Billy Zane's face. And by the end, they had had to do it so many times that she was literally spitting um, Vaseline at him. Because, yeah, she did it on more silver. Huh? Because they wanted the consistency of spit, so it stuck. But she had spit at him so many times, she had no more saliva. So they were putting Vaseline in her mouth, and she was spitting gobs of Vaseline at him. How do you fuck up a spit? Ah! <laughs> How do you mess up a spit take to where you have to do it like 40 something times? Well, either that or James Cameron just really hated Billy Zane. <laughs> Who hates Billy Zane? I don't hate Billy Zane. I didn't even hate Billy Zane as that character, and he was a total jerk in that movie. True. All right, so, um, so stealing books and things like that clearly. It's long bad. Seas. Moving on, next topic. No, just kidding. You ever had your stuff stolen, Martina? Um, not my YA books that I know of. I mean, they might be on there, but like the the big sites that some people have, have saw their books on, I haven't found mine on. But the day my first male male romance released, somebody had already pirated it. No kidding. Very same day. Very how'd, first day. How'd you find it? Um, I went to, I was Googling the book title to see, um, I was trying to get to Goodreads, but I was trying to see if my author page had finally linked on Goodreads to the book itself. 
And as soon as I typed it in, the first link was a pirate site. And I was like, oh, it might be one of those ones that's not real. Nope. They're like, PDF. And I know exactly who it was, too, because one person uh, read my book and immediately returned it within like five hours. All they were doing was pirating it and putting it back. So they didn't even pay for it one time. Wow. Yeah. So how'd you, uh, how'd you attack that? I didn't. I just left it. Because I asked Lynn. She said it doesn't matter. She goes, they won't take it down. And she goes, it happens to all of us. And really, she's like, they were never going to pay for the book anyway. She's like, so whatever. She's like, there's nothing you can do about it. Turn them into Amazon. Amazon's not going to do anything. Do you think Amazon gives a shit? Well, they could like maybe kick them off Amazon or something. We don't know who they are. Well, they could deactivate their account. But we would have to prove that they were the ones who did it. And we don't get to see who buys our books. Only Amazon does. What do you think? Amazon's going to waste their time going and be like, did you pirate that book? And they're going to be like, no. And they're going to be like, okay, thanks. Oh, well, I thought you said, well, I guess I, I get what you're saying. I thought you said you knew because they. I knew like, because I watched the, the, like, I watched a return pop up the same day. Now, granted, there's a lot of trigger warnings on the first page of my book. So it could possibly have been somebody who was like, whoa, nope. <laughs> but I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think I've, I've found mine on a couple of pirate websites and like selling my books. I've always sent cease and desist, and so far I've had pretty good, uh, pretty good result in getting getting them taken down. The funny part is, is I, every once in a while I'll find my books, like o- the old versions of my book, like first um, authentic first edition of this book for sale, two hundred dollars, and I'm like, you well, Amazon does that. Fifteen bucks. Yeah, Amazon does that. You'll see like the old. For some reason, it has something to do with a pricing glitch. But it's like, if it's an older edition, yeah, sometimes you'll find, like, my very first edition of my book for, like, $125. I'm like, oh, that's cute. Like, uh, I actually sent a signed copy when I when I very first started writing uh, Goodreads Let You Do, like, giveaways. So I gave away, like, five copies. And within, like, five days, I found my book on eBay, my signed copy. And it was for, like, $25. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. I could actually get a book signed by Stephen King for seven bucks. I was like, nobody's going to pay you $25. Nobody knows who I am. I wanted to write them a letter and be like, hi, I'm the author. You're really aiming way too high. You are overselling me by a lot. I gave this book to you for free for a reason. Nobody knows who I am. You know, that's, and you know, that kind of stuff is the reason why a long time ago I stopped giving out free physical copies of my book for like um like readers and reviews and stuff i think it's one of the one of the first things that we all learn as as young authors is you'll find that like especially instagram books oh yeah all the bookstagrammers oh if you send me a free copy of your book i'll take pictures of it and review it not worth it step if that ever happens to you i'm gonna help you out right now step one look at their profile if they've got less than i'll go ahead and say 20k no um, because I'll have people that say like, "Oh, I'll write a review and review it for my followers," and I'll click over and it's like followed by 183 people. Like, no, why am I? No, who are you? That I know that sounds so pretentious, but you have to keep in mind they want my book that's going to cost me five, seven dollars to have printed and mailed to me. So I'm about, I'm about, and then I have to mail it to you. I'm about ten, fifteen dollars deep on this for somebody to review it, and likely will not even result in a sale. Like it's. That's one of the biggest reasons why I quit doing it. And then, yeah, you would just see, they would have just bookshelves upon bookshelves of free indie books that they've gotten that they take pictures of. It's like, no, why? No, I'm not wasting my time in giving you, like giving you my free stuff. Well, I told you that one girl reviewed my book and tossed it across the room after talking about how crappy it was after I gave it to her for free. A little dignity. I was just like, I can't say what I was going to say. But just know I was angry. <laughs> Very angry. Well, and, you know, it's, again, I, it's just it's just a big gambit. And the funny thing is, is, I don't know if you've ever gotten this, Martina, but when you'll tell them, like, oh, I don't give away. Like, I try to be nice, and I don't have any copies right now. Oh, I'll wait until you get some in. Oh, it's going to be a while, and da 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 Oh, that's fine. I'll wait. Like, right, no, I listen. always just say, I don't no longer do paper copies. I was like, I'll be happy to give you an ebook, but I don't do paperback copies anymore. But I've done that, and they've even pushed back. Like, well, I, I would really prefer, I only like paper copies. I don't like e-copies. No, I'm like, then, you, okay, then, sorry. Yeah, I can't help you. you have a, a nice day. for your shelves. Not, yeah, no, go away. <laughs> I have plenty of reviews. Thank <laughs> you for your time. 
<sighs> but then you know, to be completely honest, and that's the you we actually I, I actually know a couple of like big bookstagrammers and book reviewers where that's their bread and butter. That's what they do, Sorry. and they talk about the professionalism in that. And I've been told many times that if you're a real, true blue bookstagram and book reviewer, you don't query the authors. <laughs> the authors query you. Yeah, no. Yeah, so the, I, I've actually been told. Just have a blanket statement by a couple of friends of mine that are that are book reviewers because they're like a legitimate one will never reach out to you unless you're like a big name author and they want to like they basically well, like, want you to help the them. Here's the thing, like there were booktubing booktubers were like a huge thing for a while, and when I I had somebody reach out to me and they were like, "I'll review your book. I'll do like, you know." 14 posts about your book and I'll review it and I'll go places and I'll take pictures with it, you know, for a fee. And I was like, okay, like I was like, I didn't know how it worked. So I just like, well, she accidentally sent me the prospectus that they send publishing houses instead of individual authors. So- and that's when I was like, Oh, I get it. It's just, it's just a money-making scheme. It's like it has nothing to do with whether they really like your book or not. It's all BS. Like, it's none of it's real. So, wait, so, so what do you mean? So, explain that to me because I'm even lost. So, okay. So, they basically charged indie authors, like, 150 to $500. And they would take a set amount of pictures. They would do one video where they just talk exclusively about your book. And then... They would have a certain amount of Instagram posts and Twitter posts about your book. And because they have like 500,000 followers or a million followers or whatever, you paid them for this, you know. But with publishing houses, they offer all kinds of things. This is really just help me. This thing doesn't like me. It's because I'm supposed to come down. Thank you. I got you, Martina. Martina was having a problem with her spit guard. It's in my boobs. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, so then they sent me the one for publishing houses. And it's like, well, for $5,000, we'll do a photo shoot where we dress up as the characters and, you know, cosplay as the characters. And we'll do this and we'll do that. And, you know, it'll be me and two other really well-known booktubers and we'll do this together. But that same booktuber who was actually um, part of the package deal then became an author. I will not name names. Um, But now his book prices are much more reasonable because after you realize how little money you make as an indie author, suddenly fleecing indie authors out of $500 a pop seems like highway robbery. So... It was an interesting uh, dynamic shift. Dynamic there. shift, yeah. Because, but it honestly, I paid for one booktuber who was like middle of the road. She probably had like fifty five, sixty thousand followers. I got nothing out of it. Literally nothing. I got one review from her. I got like the pictures. They looked beautiful, but it it didn't pan out in any you know, data that I could actually say was, oh, because of her readers found me. Well, it's like you were saying, um, you've actually had a great opportunity to get in like the Teen Choice Awards and stuff like that and like those gift bags. Yep. And you would think because of these basically are going to celebrities and things like that, that this is going to be a huge bump for you. But it's very... It's a gamble because yeah. there was another girl who did the, um, got into the swag bags for the Mother's Day brunch, which had like... Um, Reese Witherspoon and um, Ben Affleck's ex-wife, whose name I can't remember all of a sudden, but Jennifer. D- yes, yes, I think something. Sure, we'll go with that. And yeah. like Mila Kunis and all these people, and then her book actually got bought by I want to say Reese Witherspoon's company to you know option for movie rights. So, like. That's why people do what they do to try to get their books into these bags because you're hoping. But Reese Witherspoon, that's her whole bread and butter. Like all of her shows and stuff, she's gotten from books because she's realized it's a huge untapped market. I was just going to say, well, and the thing about it is books are original. The story's already fleshed out. You just have to format it basically to a screen. Well, look at how popular Big Little Lies is. It was so popular that they made a season two, even though the book was only like one book, you know, and they did a great job. But And she also features, you know, female-centric movies and television shows, which 
they told her was going to basically kill her company. Her company, which is worth like, I want to say at last time I looked, uh, Hello Sunshine was worth like $500 million right now. Yeah, she's actually killing it. Yeah, she's doing fantastic. And because she didn't listen to people who were like, oh, nobody wants to watch shows that are female-centric. So. You ever heard of the Oxygen Network and the fucking, uh, <laughs> those badass fucking daytime movies uh, from What uh, were you saying, Lifetime? Zach? What was that? What was that F-bombs you were dropping everywhere oh, right now? Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> Nutter. <laughs> <Fudger> nutter. <laughs> Somehow that sounded worse. <laughs> Fudger nutter. Um <laughs> what'd you do? <laughs> Can we just intro like Esri, please? Yes. So <laughs> let's um, just put a nail in this. We, episode. Yeah, we gotta stop because I think Esri's waiting for us. So um let's um Let's go ahead and get over to uh, our interview with Esri Farnham. Again, um, the sound's going to change a little bit because Martina and I have to basically... Two authors, one mic it. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. Sorry, you can... Well, like we told you guys, we got some interviews coming right at you. Speaking of you... <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you going with that segue? Straight out of Compton. Comes another author named Esri. Straight out of Minnesota. <laughs> Don't you know? So we are here with young Esri Farnham. Um, not Farnamoo, as we were discussing. Um, <laughs> Farnamoo. Because Esri Farnamoo, and then Martina's asking, why is the furniture levitating? So. <laughs> Esri is Norwegian, right? Yeah. She yeah. actually yeah. speaks it. You speak mm -hmm. No, you, you speak Norway? You speak Norway. You speak, you speak of the gods' language. I try my hardest. Can you say something in Norway? Um, well, she's yeah. asked us a no. <laughs> say, say something. Jeg snakker norskog engelsk. So what she just said was, I would like a large latte. <laughs> Zach too speaks Norway. <laughs> or, or she said happy Leif Erikson day. I don't know yet. <laughs> Do you think she even knows who Leif Erikson is? Nope. Absolutely. Is oh. it from SpongeBob? I know Leif Erikson. Personally? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Everybody who's Norwegian knows each other. Duh. <laughs> my bad. There's like 40. It's like of them. my great uncle. <laughs> that would be fucking amazing. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you cannot swear at the children, Martina. I know. This is going to be hard. So Esri is a baby deadling. You guys are going to see really quickly why Martina and I are being a little bit more reserved. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be like, what's going on here? Because there may be legalities involved. So <laughs> She's the babyest of my deadlings. She's a little wee little... Are you still 15? I'm 16 now. Oh! Going on 17. <laughs> <laughs> Practically 40 at this point. She does. She is a very old soul. I'm picking up on that vibe. So, She's more mature than we are. So, uh, Esri, I think you asked for this. So, <laughs> why do you want to be here today? Well, I had originally tried to do it with Elizabeth since we're both PAs, but that didn't work out. And so, I'm not sure, honestly. <laughs> She's like, I don't know why I signed up for this. I thought I'd have backup. <laughs> we don't know why we signed up either. Yet here we are. How many episodes later? <laughs> 35. 35? It seems like there should be 100 more. Although by the time this airs, it will be more than 35. Oh. oh well, this is 35 something. at time of airing. <laughs> no, at time of recording. Time of recording, my bad. Zach starts with this disclaimer. <laughs> we are not, nor have we ever been, psychological professionals. We are... Uh... <laughs> The advice that we are given is just advice. It is not medically sound. <laughs> we have no idea what we're talking about. Damn it, I had a joke, and then my brain's like, child! Like, all right, that's <laughs> right, I can't crack my jokes. So Esri is actually my personal assistant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Esri. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. And by personal assistant, she means bitch who doesn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. <laughs> So Esri runs all of my stuff because I am too busy to do it myself. 
So she puts up stuff and then I comment as if it is not my group, but if I am I am one of her deadlings instead of her being one of mine. <laughs> so Esri, mm-hmm. this is this place is, is safe. Martina can't hurt you. So what's it like being Martina's BA? <laughs> um She's not paying you, so you got nothing to lose here. Exactly. What are you That's gonna lose? That's true. Let's More go. Work to do? Um no. it, <laughs> <we're> <laughs> I mean it's interesting. Definitely. <laughs> Good cover. Wow. I'm, I'm going to hang myself now. <laughs> most of the time, it's just Elizabeth and I yelling at each other for which application to use for graphic design. That's a so lot of it. Did you say Elizabeth and I or Elizabeth and I? Because <laughs> what 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 area are we filming this from here? Area or era? Know. <laughs> Hoisted by my own joke. Because you can't say petard. Petard. <laughs> I even know what a petard is. <laughs> do you? I do. You wow. Are a <laughs> wow. Okay. The no. curtain's coming in with a burn. Just bam. <laughs> That's how the children die. The Dude. curtains burned. <laughs> Off caffeine. Layla is a savage. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't feel safe. Esri, can I come wherever you are? No. Oh, 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 oh. Damn, the double burn. She's um, like, no creepy old man, you can't. I'm all alone here. Oh, by myself. Don't want to be. Go ahead. <laughs> Hit that high note, Zach. We know you can. Probably. (laughs) For some reason. So Esri also writes books. Mm -hmm. Two of them so far, correct? Yeah, I've published four, but two of them I've written myself. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Two of them you stole from other people? I was going to say, I'm going to math that How brazen! (laughs) Did you buy them on Fiverr? No, no, I actually uh, used to run a high school writing club, and then they contributed some and then didn't and so I just put it together anyway so it was like you you were on a school project and you did all the fucking work sorry freaking yeah, work that's so you just, you just put, <laughs> like, put my name on this and uh... that's exactly what happened yeah except uh, I was nice she's way more accomplished at 16 than I yeah. was that I am now <laughs> jeez at 16 I was learning that there's a difference between shampoo and conditioner <laughs> were you yeah Devine thought it was funny to tell me that you don't you're not supposed to use shampoo only like once a month you're supposed to use conditioner daily so she thought it was a huge funny joke because i had constantly greasy hair then for like weeks and then she's like yeah i can't believe you fell for that wow your mom man yeah that's my birth giver yeah, it's bring down the room <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Child Services. You guys did a great fucking job. Freaking job. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard I, not swearing. I gotta it, tell you, though, it's okay, Esri, though. Esri's parents are hilarious. I have never seen two people troll their own child as much as these two do. Good natured, I'm guessing. <laughs> I just want to be yes. friends with her parents so badly. And I think they think that I'm some sort of evil slave driver who just they demands work from Esri for free. I mean, are you not, though? No, I gave her a bunch of free stuff, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I that said, sounded so rehearsed, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, was, here by my I own. felt so bad. I, I, like, literally just boxed up a bunch of stuff. I was like, here, here, you can have this, too. How about this? I am here by my own volition. I am by no means concerned by my own health safety. As she's just holding a newspaper in front of with her. Today, with today's, today's date, date on it. Blink twice if you need help. They said I'm not allowed to blink. It's bad for my reflection. So anyway, you're totally here willingly. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, for sure. That's That's right. what I'm doing. Just for legal reasons, we have to we have to claim, <laughs> claim that. Um, so, what do you like about writing other than stealing other people's stuff? <laughs> um, well, I really wanted to. Um, overall, I just didn't think that there was enough young writers, I guess, and so I really wanted to go and 
use that advantage to put my own work out there. And so I wanted a book that was laid heavily with symbolism to exaggerate the hypocrisy of the world into a more black and white context. So I used magic and science fiction to show that evil and good aren't inherently less lesser than one another. I'm going to need you to tone that down a little. <laughs> Talk to him like he's a kindergartner. Yeah. Good and evil are equally... <laughs> Good and evil, bad. <laughs> there's balance. See, there's a yin and a yang <laughs> for every season. <laughs> wow. I know, she just gave the most accomplished answer out of any interview we've ever done, and she's the youngest person we've ever... By, by decades. <laughs> That's one thing I hate about when I when we speak to like young like middle teen authors that are becoming successful. I'm like, you're so much more mature than I am now. It's ridiculous. But don't worry, Esri can throw that that teen jargon at you, and you're like, what the hell? I, I can speak it? teen jargon. No, like can't. I got like lips no, you, and you can't. You can't. And some of her memes are so complicated that I'm just like, oh, that's cool. I don't know what that means, but yeah, yeah, no, I. Yeah, yeah, Steven yeah. Universe and Bojack Horseman. Woo! <laughs> I think those are actually... Those are too old. Yeah, now. those are ones I get. Esri does some stuff that I'm just like, I obviously haven't been on Tumblr enough lately because I don't know where that one came from. Oh, God, I just got a cramp in my neck because I'm old. Ow! <laughs> Speaking of old, <laughs> Martina's body is slowly systematically killing herself. <laughs> it's starting with the neck. <laughs> So Esri, so that's actually a pretty noble goal for, you know, what you're trying to write now. How are you going to continue to press that forward? Um, well, I've done a lot of research into various things to accomplish making my book look more realistic in today's setting. And uh, I have a few different planets in my world. And one of them practices light magic, one of them practices dark magic. And so the light planet um, considers themselves superior because of the light magic. And um, it's demonstrated through meeting various um, other species of different backgrounds. And my goal is to just basically make a kick butt science fiction fantasy novel. And I'm just gonna continue hoping that it works. Um, two things. One, I think it's cute that you said kick butt. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, kick ass. Does that work better? Yeah! Ooh. See, if she's allowed to swear, I'm allowed to swear. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> All of a sudden, her parents descend from the ceiling and steal her laptop, and they're like, interview done! Yeah. <laughs> Never again! Aww. Also, she has a little teeny tiny baby sister whose name is Freya. Yes. She's so stinking oh, I like cute. Her little Isn't she either. so cute? That so, little blonde hair. I also have to say, I'm actually kind of annoyed with you, Esri, because you have a great radio voice, and it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Zach's nasally voice that he thinks is like super radio announcer guy, it's not. Do you want me to kick into that? <laughs> there you go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Esri, it's thanks for coming by today. It's been a great time talking to you. Oh, no, trigger finger, stop it. <laughs> Whoa, trigger. <laughs> Whoa, trigger. Are you triggered That's by my trigger finger? a double burn for multiple reasons. Uh, <laughs> I figured that out. <laughs> I didn't bring it up, though. But we all know what you meant. <laughs> it's not my fault you're sensitive about horses. <laughs> Everybody's sensitive about horses. <laughs> Not me. I hate horses. Good. I don't. I That's don't. it. There, I said it. I hate horses. Well, that's just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Esri, what is one thing? So, I ask this a lot. Huh? Oh, yeah. What's the name of your books called? Um, what you wrote and the ones that you murdered people for? Um, so, the ones that I murdered people for were Working Title. And the other one that I posted, I don't, I don't remember. I, Did you I, really call it working title? Yeah, I thought it was clever. <laughs> it is clever. I, yeah, actually, I was actually like, oh, that's I, funny. I was going to be smart, Alec, and be like, oh, working title, huh? That's a great name of a book. But then I'm like, wait. That's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> 
She is clever. Damn it! I know. <laughs> also, has anybody noticed that your dog has now just decided that the way I'm laying is the perfect way for him to just curl himself around me? So he is now glued to my butt. <laughs> well, <laughs> just I'm gl be glad that he decided to glue himself and not insert himself. <laughs> oh, just, well, he's so small. <laughs> I would have even felt it. <laughs> no, stop it. Ew. <laughs> Don't Sorry, gross. not being gross. It's so gross. <laughs> there are so many dogs all around me, including Zach and his freaking whistle. Leave the whistle alone. He's wearing a whistle, <laughs> like freaking 1970s gym coach. <laughs> my name Jim. <laughs> gym coach. That's my name. <laughs> Whistles are my I'm Coach Jim. Your gym coach. <laughs> Awesome people that like really crappy puns. <laughs> uh, okay, so who ask her your dumb questions that you ask everybody? So, as we being you know all knowing, uh huh, uh -huh. and way more mature than we are, right? So as you're kind of doing things in the book world and stuff, what are some things that you like about being an indie book author or working in the indie world, and what are some things that suck or people need to quit doing? Well, I always despise. Um, reviews mainly just i'm constantly no, we all. <laughs> i want people to stop reviewing <laughs> just stop it just buy my books and shut up <laughs> exactly. grateful exactly um but i really do love the community of it all and especially that i can just write what i want without having to worry about other readers besides my i guess ideal readers what is, your, what is your ideal reader? What do they look like? <laughs> Who are the people that you would want to read your books? Now's a good sales pitch. Like, what does your ideal reader look like? Looks a lot like you. <laughs> Trigger fingers. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> well. Yeah, we're waiting. So who is your ideal yeah. reader? Um, well, it's someone that praises me a lot. I have attention needs. This is like a dating what a website. What coincidence! That's my ideal <laughs> reader too. Which, it's like, I, what's your ideal date? Like, what's your ideal reader? Somebody that's soft and caring and likes my interests. It just makes me think of this congeniality. What would you say is your perfect date? I would say July twenty third. Not too <laughs> hot. Not, not too cold. cold. All you need is a it's light jacket. jacket. <laughs> <sighs> Good times. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. I'm gliding here. Anyway, okay. So what else do you have to? <laughs> yeah. So what else? So you basically, uh, so your ideal reader is basically somebody who just loves you. Yeah. That's all. Well, I do have a few people that I like write for, but I got done reading Stephen King's memoir on writing, and he just drilled ideal reader into my head for about like two chapters, and so that's that's the only thing I can come up with. Was that book as pretentious as it sounds? Yeah. Yeah, super. Yeah, the Kings are kind of a pretentious family. Oh, that chick who was telling me that she read my book brought up Stephen King and said she accidentally met Stephen King. She asked some guy to get out of her way, and when he turned around, it was Stephen King. That's oh, jeez. <laughs> Layla and I followed a guy around Mount Dora. To this day, I'm convinced he was Stephen King, because we got, like, from me to Layla, and I'm like, that's and Stephen King, Layla. What do you think? He got confused. He saw this little town. He was like, "What am I back in Maine?" I don't know. Maybe he's on vacation. <laughs> if he's gonna vacation to somebody outside of Maine, someplace outside of Maine, he's gonna look for places just like <laughs> Maine. He's like, "I want to go to Maine, but I want it to be really hot and have mosquitoes." So Mount Dora, Florida. <laughs> Here I come. <sighs> so, yeah. So if you could, if you could stop one thing in the indie community, what would it be? She said it. Reviews. <laughs> Bad reviews is what I'm guessing she means. Yeah, I'll stick with my first answer. Just, yeah, that's it. Just stop it. Just stop, stop reviewing. It. It's none of your, just read the book and enjoy it. I don't give a shit yeah. if you like it or not. Shut up and give me your money. It's like we're, we're strong arm robbing readers. <laughs> you'll take my book and you'll like it. Wow. Okay. Thanks. 
have another joke that I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra, can you hurry up and get older already? Just 18. That's all we, I need. We have um, a jokes. policy in my house where it's, if it's needed to say, it should be said. So my parents will literally stop me if I say crap until I say shit. So it's a good. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love her parents. <laughs> That's actually really good parenting. In my opinion. The fact that Ezri's the one who's like, no, I'm censoring myself. Like, just let me do it. I am a child. I'm Damn a- it, treat me like one. <laughs> baby deadly, you monsters. Just let me keep my innocence. What's wrong with you people? The world is already a dark place. <laughs> Give me my youthful hope. Well. I don't know. I'm looking at the curtains. Playmas? Okay. Okay. We just got to keep an eye on the clock. You why know. are you Why are you cradling his foot? Because my foot is cradled. It's in my lap. Can, she, I can Ezri it? see your foot? No. Can you see Ezri? Nope. Oh, okay. Ezri didn't enable the camera. I was just curious. I when I call people, I never do the video. It's not necessary, and it slows well, down. Well, we did with Zach's boyfriend. It slows down the audio because he initiated it. <laughs> you mean sandwich head? <laughs> so, so Dan was the one who made the first move, and the Dan and Zach. Yeah. This is super couple. It was a good. He broke the ice talking about Margarita. Yeah. So what's their ship name? What? The good uh, ship Dak. misery. Dak. <laughs> Our ship name? Or Zan. Zan! Dak Zan. Dak Zan sounds like a really crappy, like, 80s action hero. <laughs> Dak Zan, P.I. <laughs> it should be P.I. dot 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 Z-Z-A, because they're going to do that pizza. P-I-Z-Z-A. <laughs> I want pizza, like Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen's sleepover movie. How the hell do you know that? And why? We're pulling, pulling, pulling an all-nighter. No, come on. <laughs> Martina is legit shook right now. <laughs> now I know why that librarian was so concerned about you. The Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen sleepover. Oh, yeah, I used to love that. I yeah. still love the Mary-Kate Were you together when you watched it? Because why the fuck is that? watching it. You cannot remember. swear there is a baby deadling on the other side. <laughs> no, in this case, it needed to be said. <laughs> absolutely. I am referring back to the Farnham rules. <laughs> There's absolutely no reason for you to be watching Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. that's your story. Yeah. I also watched the Spice World movie dozens of times. With your sister who can't say pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. <laughs> pterodactyl. <laughs> no, with calves. Actually, Cass is who I watched the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movie with too. I feel like Cass is a little confused about life. Well, yeah. Cass is Max. To the Max. <laughs> Cass is Max. It does not make any sense to anybody. My my brother sister trans. <laughs> you can't say brother sister. <laughs> My sister brother? <laughs> Is there a hyphen in there? I don't know. How does that look on paper? <laughs> I'm sorry. How do they identify currently? Yes. <laughs> Is they them? <laughs> pronouns? Yes, please. <laughs> Is that a sexual identity? I don't know. I, I, Max I, identifies as what? what Whoever. Just Whatever depending. you want to call her him, it does not matter. Her him. So in this one matter. case, it really it is her really him. So it's a hair him? A hair him? <laughs> Why are you stroking my foot like a villain cat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see if I'm surprised it's not tickling you. I did it once by accident. I was like, that doesn't tickle. So I, I don't know, but I feel it. dirty watching you two do this. Can you this, just... We should record that angle, that spot only, and that's the $100. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> just Layla stroking Zach's hairy foot. foot. Gross. Slap the foot. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to get you a ruler so you can, like, really slap the bottom of his foot. Or I shoe. bet he'll only ask for that once. Or, or, or repeatedly. And well, then, we've got, learn then we've got a hundred dollar tier. <laughs> There's gonna be one guy that's Zach being on my tortured Facebook. like a POW. There's gonna be one guy that's gonna subscribe to it. <laughs> I bet more than one. <laughs> His name is Nicholas. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, little Esri, is there anything else you want to tell us? How can people find you? Like, your social media. Wait, <laughs> your social media, not you. <laughs> they want to um, read your books, not kidnap you. Oh, so, um. <laughs> or kidnap you, I guess, whatever. I mean, but... she is a good PA, I guess. But... She's a great PA. So good that I don't even actually consult her anymore. I just sort of let her do her thing. Um. At as author Esri Farnham is my social media. On which social media? There's Instagram and Facebook, and I also have my own website, EsriFarnham.com. And could you spell your first name for the people playing at home? <laughs> e Z R I. Thank you. <laughs> I thought she was saying easy. <laughs> it's easy. R I. That's not how you spell as. Oh. <laughs> Yes. But Sometimes I think that Esri's only with my PA because I named a character after her in my book. She feels obligated. She's indebted for life. That's right. Forever. Forever, ever. Forever, forever, ever. She all you have to do is name a character. Forever. It never seems that long until you're gone. But know that a day by day we're finding it too long. Oh, no. But I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. I used to hate that never song. Never meant to why? make your daughter cry. Because it's such a crappy no, song. No, 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 why? Oh, yeah, why? Stop it. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me like, like you <laughs> tap a dog in the head with a newspaper like, hey, stop, stop that. <laughs> it's like I was hoping to change the channel. Come on, it's a mundo. You didn't know I actually knew how to sing in Spanish, did you? I do. Surprise! You almost said it. I'm going to need a minute. You're going to have to keep going on without me. Yeah, I'll mess you up. Yeah. Oh, no, I can, I can sing and say habla espanol. The only yeah, Spanish so. song I know is La Bamba. <laughs> I had to sing it in fifth grade. There's like three so there's like three lines to that song, and then they repeat it. That's like, I know a song, and I know a Spanish song. What's that? Tequila. <laughs> there's a lot of words in La Bamba. You shut your mouth. <laughs> oh. God. All right, well, I think it hurts. You know, I think we'll, we'll I'll, I'll finish up the rest of that song in the next episode. Okay, great. I'm sure everybody just <laughs> can't wait. <sighs> All right. Well, Esri, thank you for coming by and dealing with the chaotic ramblings of our podcast. Thank you for having me. You are the, and probably will remain, the only to date PG-13 episode <laughs> of Books and BS. Now get back to work. Yeah. Absolutely. My social media doesn't run itself. Chop, chop. Absolutely. On it. <laughs> all right, Esri. Well, um, thank you for coming by. Unless there's anything else you want to declare to those out there listening, all six of them. Run. <laughs> Sound advice. <laughs> Peace drop. Run. <laughs> <laughs> and then Esri just starts. <laughs> all of a sudden, a trailer kicks off in a world. <laughs> With 15-year-old authors. <laughs> 16, 16! 16, going on 17. So I think she was like 12 when she published her first book or something. One Around girl will straight up murder you for your plot line. <laughs> <laughs> With a smile. Esri Farnham in Die, Die, Stabby, Stab. <laughs> it was, it was, an, Electric it was very nice, Stab. <laughs> she might stab people like a lady. <laughs> As you find them in, killing them softly. <laughs> <laughs> also starring the Fugees. <laughs> I think she's too young to know who the Fugees are. She's very, I don't know, she's pretty freaking sophisticated. Do you know who the Fugees are? If I say yes, does that win me anything? No, because I'll know you're lying. Then no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. You should look them up. They're pretty dope.
Kids who Will I Am just saying his name in the background of every song <laughs> all through Will the 2000s. I am got the beat now. That's like, uh, you, like, uh, who is it? You know, it's a Pitbull song when he starts listing cities. Yes. <laughs> Worldwide, Tokyo, Berlin, Dolly. Dolly. Yeah, just Dolly. <laughs> Why? What's with the Dolly? Like Salvador? Or what are we doing? Which Dolly? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Throw us a bone here, man. Which Dolly are we talking about? I don't even know what it means. I don't know. It's a Spanish word, but I don't know what it means. Because it's like D-A-H-L-I or something. And I only knew that once I saw the sub. Llama? (laughs) Yes. He's shouting out the Dalai Lama. (laughs) That would actually be hilarious if that's what it was this whole time. Who knew Pitbull was a Buddhist? (laughs) Maybe maybe that's what it is. It's Pit Buddhist. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've been saying it wrong this whole time. time. He's like, I've been throwing you clues. Dolly, come on. (laughs) Pay attention. All right, Esri. Well, thank you for coming by. Um, we'll have to have you on again. Um, and maybe next time we'll... Get rid of me so I can be honest. <laughs> so she can be honest about how she really feels. Yeah, we'll put Martina in the soundproof room. <laughs> while Leila plays with my kneecap skin. <laughs> That's so creepy. Just goodbye, Esri. Before you get even weirder. <laughs> Bye. 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 Un outro. Uh, what? Uh, What's wrong with you? Stop it. It's Italian. It means one more. You're actually asking. Um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> that was Esri, Martina's baby deadling. My baby is. So, Martina, I think we behave for the most part, but we need to hurry up and end this thing before we say more profanities. <laughs> We're literally going to explode. We're just going to stop recording it's and just really start just right screaming now. out George Carlin's seven dirty oh, words. Oh, my God. Or that Blink-182 song. Oh, okay, um, when we're done with this, I'm going to play that real quick because it's like a 30-second <laughs> song. But, all right, um, Martina, go ahead and hit him up with our social media. Oh, if you guys don't know this by now. What the <laughs> heck? What the heck? Gosh darn it. <laughs> okay, you can find us on Facebook at Books and... Can I even say what we... <laughs> our title? At Books and Bull Bleep! <laughs> Just kidding. Um, you can find us on IG at Books and BS Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Books Bullshit P1. <laughs> and you can email us your stories or to complain about the fact that we didn't swear in this episode at Books and BS Podcast at gmail.com. Please, please, please don't forget to rate, review, subscribe wherever you listen to us. It really, 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 really helps. Now Zach's going to whore out the, pod, the Patreon. So for all you guys out there that like this, uh, this free stuff that we're giving you um if you want more uh go check out our patreon i was gonna say you sound like a creeper you should just let layla do it i know right oh layla you want to sell our patreon do do you want to sell our patreon do you you want to sell our our patreon Patreon? do you want to make us money (laughs) get really naughty on the mic not on this episode Superstar. Uh, superstar. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, why superstar. To, why do I have to cradle this? Layla, this is the PG-13 one. That was not rated R. That is a this legitimate is your question. dirty mind. Layla's rated E for every. Layla's like your mom. Wow. She's rated E for everyone. Damn. <laughs> My mom's dead. That's not funny. That's sad. That's what you're into. All right, Layla, go. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> My mother was a saint! Um, the Patreon has a lot of um, extra content that, you know, Zach and Martina are constantly being hilarious, and I'm constantly recording them without their consent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Layla opening herself up for a lawsuit. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Zach would not see me. Oh, I meant me. No. He would lose everything. <laughs> yeah, he would lose his editor, his marketing manager. I know my place. I have all the power. <laughs> Zach was like, yes, mistress. Um, yeah, so it has extra content. Um, silly videos of Zach doing really, really dumb stuff. stuff. <laughs> Um, uh, audio of Zach reading some stuff that RPG 13 viewers should probably not listen to. 
Um, Let's be honest. Our PG-13 who... listeners should not be even on here. On, there should be no, no PG-13 ex- listeners. Exactly. Esri, go home. <laughs> Read a wholesome book. Esri, put on some earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, well, it's Minnesota. She probably never takes off earmuffs. Isn't it cold there year-round? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I will not sell the Patreon to you the same way Zach does, because... If you want the extra stuff, then you're going to go and find the extra stuff. If you don't want the extra stuff, then you're not going to find the extra stuff. Wow, you're terrible at this. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> buy it if you want to, but just, yeah, it's okay if you exactly. don't. Exactly. Buy it if you want to. If you don't buy it and we stop Zach, take the mic. Podcast, she's, listening. she's costing us money. Then that's on you. Mistress <laughs> Curtin says, go find the content. Yeah, Leo, we were hoping for a little bit more angry Layla. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can do that too. Do angry Layla and tell them to go buy her. Go to All right, listen. <laughs> yeah, talk to them like you talked to Zach's yeah. kids yesterday. Yeah. That was hilarious. She's like, listen, listen, I don't have time for this crap. You need to get your stuff I, done. I am to literally the top of my um, ability to give a f- frick. <laughs> uh, Listening to Layla get if, angry <laughs> without swearing is hilarious. It's, it's hard. It's a lot harder than it's. Listen, you fudging frickers. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for real, I do... A lot, all the time. I'm constantly exhausted. And when we don't have the funds to continue making this podcast, uh, we'll stop making this podcast. Which, on the one hand, would be nice because then do I would have less to do. you want us to stop making this podcast? But we will stop making this podcast <laughs> if we do not get the money con- to continue to make it. So, Zach that and I are holding newspapers. We're like, please help us. For just one dollar a month, you can save us. <laughs> but that's the reality of it. You know, it, at the end of the day, it, we're a business. We rely on you guys to help support us. If you're willing to go out there, buy coffee that you want, buy the shoes that you want, buy the clothes that you want. If you want those things, you pay for them. If you want Martina and Zach to continue doing what they do, if Talk you want them to porn. continue talking about, yes, that that sort of thing, or some wholesome topics occasionally. Um, if you want some wholesome stuff, you best you best email us at booksandbspodcast at gmail.com because right. uh, nobody has said that just to date. Like, just like when they write their books. You want them to write their books, they, you're going to have to buy their books. Yes. So at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. If you want something, you are going to have to pay for it. Um, and that's what the Patreon is. We're willing to spend the hours and hours and hours that we spend sitting here recording um, because we like doing it. We enjoy doing it. And we love you guys. But at the same time, uh, we have to be able to be able to afford to continue to do it. And it is a very expensive thing to do. Um, we have to pay for all of the subscriptions we have to pay for to keep our podcast going. All the equipment, all the gas, money, all of the everything that keeps this thing going. So that's where we rely on you guys. And if you don't want it, then you don't get it. But it's what it is, what it is. I'm giving right, this then. thing back okay, to Zach now. She hey, probably hey. tried to give it back five minutes ago, but Zach oh, was yeah. so deep in his phone, he, was. he wasn't paying attention. Punchline Again. is, guys, go to our Patreon. Give us money if you like hearing what you hear and because you love us. Other than that, we're going to get out of here. Bye. Toodles.